In the main event, Danny Garcia puts his unified super lightweight title and unbeaten record on the line against contender Lightning Rod Salka. Styles make fights, and coming off a controversial decision win against Mauricio Herrera, Garcia gets right back in there with a guy who has just the style and the blueprint on how to best him. Also, Lamont Peterson puts his IBF world title on the line against power-punching New Yorker Edgar Santana. Peterson's roller coaster ride of a career continues after getting destroyed by Lucas Matisse, and then he bounces back to win the IBF title against unbeaten Dieri Jean. As has been the story throughout the history of prize fighting, Edgar Santana is on the road to redemption after losing three years of the prime of his career behind bars. Since his return, he is five and one, all wins coming via KO. Now the ultimate prize of a world title is right in front of him. And one of boxing's most inspirational stories and best young talents, Brooklyn's own Daniel Jacobs tries to win his first world middleweight championship on home turf against Australia's Jared Left Jab Fletcher, who is traveling the long journey from down under with plans of upsetting Jacobs and putting himself on the top of the boxing world. Two world champions defending their titles, one young star ready to be crowned at home in Brooklyn, and three unheralded, very live underdogs with everything to gain and nothing to lose, the most dangerous kind of opponents in boxing. As a special bonus, we will also sit down with the golden boy himself, Hall of Famer and President of Golden Boy Promotions, Oscar De La Hoya, to discuss this triple header of championship action. Well, you not only have um, uh, three big names in the sport of boxing with um, um, Daniel Jacobs and Peterson, and uh, you also have uh, Danny Garcia, who is a, uh, a unified uh, world champion at, a, at 140 pounds, a division that, is, is, uh, that he has basically wiped out. Um, for many years now, um, but being matched against guys who who are hungry, who are determined, um, who are who are real opponents, opponents that um, are going to come in uh, with that extra motivation to uh, to to pull off the upset. Those are the dangerous fights. So I invite you, uh, August 9th, uh, You don't want to miss it. It meant the world to me to become a world champion. It, it was a dream of mine as a little kid, you know, to uh, to be a world champion. So when I when I finally um, won the title, it just felt like everything to me. It's an I tell everybody all the time, it's an unexplainable feeling. He's a fighter who uh, who grew up in the amateurs, uh, um, um, fighting his way up up to the up the ladder and um, and 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 trying to get discovered by by any promoter out there and so we came along and we believed in him and um, and, and we started promoting him and uh, and now he has been upsetting uh, a lot of uh, a lot of great champions like Eric Morales and, and like uh, Lucas Matisse knocking out um, um, Amir Khan um, Danny Garcia is is one of those fighters who in the beginning people wanted to count out people were labeling him as the underdog, but now uh, Danny Garcia is in a position where he he is now the uh, the the A side of uh, um, um, he is now uh, um, considered the favorite to win every single fight because of his uh, his stature in the in the game, you know, being world champion, being undefeated. Uh, people always expect him to win, but. Um, in this game, you never know who's going to win. It's it's you're one punch away from being upset. Uh, you're one punch away from being uh, you know uh, recording your first loss. So uh, you know Danny Garcia is a fighter who who understands that. But you know this is boxing. You never know what's going to happen. Being an underdog is great. Yeah, I, I uh, you don't have anything to lose. You know the upside's all there, and and the pre there's no real pressure you know I, that's what I was told my family I'm like heck if I keep winning fights and keep being the b-side my next fight that's always a good thing you know if I win this fight and in my next fight I'm the b-side that means <laughs> you know I'm fighting better fighters every fight so as long as I'm winning and I'm the b-side I'm okay with that a-side b-side it doesn't it doesn't matter to me especially being on tv is huge now like uh 
I made that mistake coming coming up early, fighting in people's hometowns off TV, and losing majority decisions. When you're like, how does how did that happen? You know what I mean? And uh, you live and learn. So now on TV, I'm really not worried about it because even if you don't get the decision, like when I fought Alvar Ricardo Alvarez, I didn't get the decision, but everybody saw the fight, so it didn't really hurt me. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, sometimes boxing is about giving the less fortunate, less connected guys a chance. And I know for myself, the guy that fought, you know, right, Danny Garcia, Rod Salka, I saw him get robbed blind on the Maidana Broner card uh, last year on the undercard on, on Show Extreme. He was robbed against Canelo's brother, um, Dinamita, uh, uh, Dinamita Alvarez. I felt Rod Salka boxed his, the shoes off him and, and, and he didn't get a decision. And um, from that perspective, I was worried that Rod Salka, you know, may never get another chance at, at, a, at, a, at, a, at a fight where of, of some importance and that could lead to something because Saka was better than that, better than getting robbed in that fight. I'm not sure that he's good enough to beat Danny Garcia, but I'm happy that a guy like that gets an opportunity to at least try because he, he's a good boxer and this gives him all the motivation he needs because everybody's writing him off. And yeah, people will say, oh, the, you know, Danny Garcia shouldn't be fighting these guys. He's no hoper, so to speak. But Danny Garcia's fought a lot of tough guys, a lot of tough guys on paper. So this is sort of a Rocky Balboa type kind of story, you know? And Garcia's from Philadelphia, so <laughs> why not, right? Why not give it a, give it a, give Saka a shot? See, I understood why I was an underdog. I was fighting a bigger name. It didn't necessarily mean he was better than me. It was just to the, to the general public and the boxing fans all around the world. They just knew his name. Or I might be fighting another guy and he just been on a hot streak. And, um, you know, they're so, the, the media is so focused on him that, you know, they, they consider me the underdog. But in my head, mentally, I never entered a fight. Being an underdog, I knew I had the skills and the will to beat anybody, and that's exactly what I did. I don't think that there's anybody in the world that I can't beat when I'm when I'm at my best. When I'm when I'm have this camp like I have now, I'm training. I mean, I'm even more prepared now than for the last two fights. The, the Alvarez fight I had, my grandfather passed away in the middle of camp. My dad was in the emergency room. I had, I had a baby. My baby girl was born during that whole camp. There was a ton of stuff going on. This last camp, my assistant trainer, he was with us for five years in the gym every day. He had just passed away. Um, and, and like I said, I had a baby girl, so my wife works, so all day during the day I had to be home with my kid. Well, this fight, there's none of that. I'm living at the boxing camp for the first time in two years. I'm staying there. There's no distractions. My mother took off work to watch the kid. Uh, I, have, I have no issues with anything. This is probably going to be the best camp I've had in a year and a half. So I'm more confident and more ready than I've been for, for any fight, and I don't feel like, I, no matter who it is, you know, Danny Garcia or whoever, I don't, I don't feel like anybody when I come out there and do what I can do, is, is going to be able to beat me. As you can see, I face the best fighters out there, from Amir Khan to Lucas Matisse to Zab Judah in Brooklyn to Eric Morales. I faced a lot. Kendall Hall, uh, Nate Campbell when I was coming up. So I faced a lot of great fighters. Um, I was one of the only fighters who faced the best fighters in his division at the time. Amir Khan was the best at the time. They said Lucas Matisse was the best at the time. So. I never ducked anybody. Um, at the end of the day, I take nobody lightly because I know everybody wants to be world champion and I know they're hungry. August 9th at the Barclays Center, Danny Garcia is going to get the best Rod Salka that anybody's ever seen. And I'm sure he's not taking me lightly. I'm sure he's training because uh, the pressure's all on him for this fight. So I'm going to come out, do what I have to do. And at the end of the day, I'll be world champion. If the BC's on board, whoever's on board, it doesn't matter. Danny Garcia is the best 140 pounder in the world. And after August 9th, Rod Salka will be the best 140 pounder in the world. August 9th, Rod Salka, I know you come in a fight, but this is a different level. You find a world champion. This is my seventh world title fight. No losses. Come August 9th, you will get knocked out. Well, the way I grew up and to know that, to have in my head the whole time, you know, as you know, going through rough times growing up, to think that I would be world champion the whole time through, and knowing that's what got me through all the tough times, knowing that you know I was going to be a world champion when it finally happened, it was the greatest feeling in the world. You know, um, you know, I worked 20 years to get pretty much like 17. I worked 17 years to get to this point, to that point, and um, it was a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication put into it. Um, words can't describe how I feel, but I'll probably feel even better when my brother won the championship. You gotta, you, you gotta be like strong-minded. You gotta, you gotta be a very strong-minded person <clears throat> to be a fighter. You gotta be a special person, I feel, you know, to, 
<clears throat> to be a fighter and to, to compete at a, at, a, at a high level, you know? And that's taught me, that's taught me how to be grounded and, you know, just, that's, that's really taught me how to live life in a totally different way, you know, in a, in a positive way. Through all the, you know, the ups and downs in my boxing career, uh, I managed to get through because I was just not a crybaby. <laughs> but seriously, um, I understand it's life. You know, life is full of ups and downs. And uh, so I don't expect everything to be peaches and creams all the time. I understand I'm going to be dealt um, some rough hands sometimes. And uh, I like to think that I was built tough. So I'll get past it. Incarceration, you know, it woke me up, you know. I mean, I've gotten uh, chewed up and spit up by the streets a few times. So that, that woke me up and I was like, you know, you know, I gotta, gotta take things, you know, a little bit more serious. And, you know, that, that, that kind of changed me after that, you know. I started, I started thinking with a different, different mentality, you know. And uh, ever since that, I've been 100% focused and I've been training hard ever, ever since then. To see a fight, no boxing match. Yeah, if, we, if you want to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, I know I can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him and I'll win the fight. Um, I don't expect him to try to box. I, that's why, you know, the fans talking about it, you know, like he don't deserve a shot. At the end of the day, we can put that aside. It's going to be a great fight. I love that I'm the underdog in this fight. You know, it uh, motivates me, and uh, I think, I think it's, it's going to play against him. I mean, I don't know if he's overlooking me for this fight, but uh, I, know, <clears throat> I know what he's expecting. It's, it's, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's, it's going to play towards, you know, towards my, my, my favor, I think. But first of all, to... It's impossible for me to overlook uh, Santana. A lot of people is talking down on him and saying that, you know, he don't deserve a title shot, but I actually look at him as a good fighter. You know, I've watched tape on him now. I've, I've watched tape on, on him before because I think we were supposed to fight some years back, like four or five years ago, on like a showbox card. So, you know, I already had film on him. I save all the, you know, tapes and stuff because I just love watching boxing. So um, I actually think, think that he could fight. I know he can fight, and I know it'll be a great fight um, August 9th. Fighters know the, 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 the mentality of what the fighter's going through, you know. Santana knows that Peterson is probably thinking, oh, I'm going to walk through this guy with no problem. See, so Santana's getting, in the, getting ready for the fight of his life and getting in great shape. And, um, you know, I, people always ask me, well, who are you, uh, what's your prediction, who are you picking? I don't know. I don't know because um, these matchups um, were made for a reason, and uh, it's either it's either to uh, to 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 test the champion, um, not only f not only his physical ability, but also his 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 head, where he's at. You know, is is he is he still focused? Is he taking this guy lightly? Um, you know, is he training hard and, and fighting for the, you know, the fight of his life? Just because it's not a big name doesn't mean that it's, he's a dangerous opponent. So um, these, these types of events, I'm, I'm really excited because um, you're also giving the opportunity to the underdog, which, um, which history shows lately with Golden Boy fights that the underdog um, always comes out uh, for some strange reason, uh, pulls up an upset. This fight is definitely a fight for a lifetime, and I'm gonna prove that it's you know I I belong here. It's my time, you know. It's, it's not nothing against Peterson. <clears throat> I respect him as a fighter, but he's not gonna beat me August 9th. For Jared Fletcher, it is literally the other side of the world, but for Daniel Jacobs. It is home.
he has a, a, a victorious story um, that, that one should look at and, um, and, and be motivated and, 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 uh, and just look at what he has accomplished, um, not just inside the ring, but outside the ring, what he has overcome. Um, it really is truly inspirational. Um, Daniel Jacobs is, is a person, a fighter who who has overcome uh, some really, really difficult uh, obstacles um, that, that were put in front of his life, and um, and he's showed that he can, you know, get off the canvas and, and 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 fight one more round. You know, this is his passion. This is what he loves doing. You know. But again, again, you have um, you have a guy who uh, who is hungry, who is flying all the way from from Australia to uh, to upset the uh, the guy who many people think is going to win. So it's um, it's it's one of these events where um, I feel um, you know you don't want to you don't want to put all your money on 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 the guy who's the A side on paper, you know, you want to you wanna really think about what's at stake here. Um, and what's at stake here is really, um, you know, who wants it, who wants it more. In this corner wants to thank Danny Garcia, Lamont Peterson, Daniel Jacobs and their opponents, Rod Salka, Edgar Santana and Jared Fletcher, and of course the Golden Boy himself, Hall of Famer Oscar De La Hoya. Don't miss Golden Boy's triple header August 9th from the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York on Showtime Championship Boxing. For In This Corner, I'm James Smith.